The statute that I'm charged under and the uh, sentence that I have is exactly the same as that of El Chapo Guzman, the head of the Sinaloa cartel. Craig's was really one of the most egregious stories for a few reasons. He didn't use marijuana. He was never caught with marijuana. He really, he was a third party vendor. Let's talk about marijuana reform, shall we? Or cannabis, Mary Jane, ganja. It has many names. In the United States of America, cannabis is still on schedule one. Yes, it is. It's right up there with heroin. Can you believe that in 21st century? It is absolutely true. And I wanna discuss a story about a man who had a life sentence. He's not the only one, but many have had life sentences. For what? Trafficking, put my air quotes up, in cannabis. So, so follow me on this, I'm gonna get this. Craig Cecil is his name. And he was unsuspecting. He had a company and he retrofitted vehicles or trucks. And he had no idea that one of his clients was trafficking in marijuana. But unfortunately, I did some work directly for a company that released trailers. And this company would take the trailers down to uh, Mexico, hollow out the lot walls, fill the walls with marijuana, drive those uh, trucks through the border patrol. I didn't know what they were doing. They, they drove the trucks all the way up here a thousand or so miles away for me to rebuild them back to their original shape. They saw my participation in their offense by rebuilding the trailers when they were done with them. They saw that as me agreeing to their uh, trafficking of marijuana. Well, he had the stiffest charges put against him and given a life sentence for marijuana. Possession, trafficking mainly, even though he didn't know that that was going on. Can you imagine getting a life sentence for trafficking in marijuana? Makes no sense, but it is still a reality. And especially since there are many states in the United States of America who have in fact legalized marijuana. We're just waiting on the feds to catch up with the people. There are even more states that allow a medical marijuana and there are states that allow both medical and recreational use marijuana. We need to take marijuana off of Schedule 1, decriminalize it, and also while we're at it, go ahead and set some captives free. Right now there's 17,400 petitions sitting at the uh, Office of Pardon Attorney filed by the, there's about 130,000 uh, federal prisoners right now. All those petitions are sitting there and I, I think it's a safe bet that way less than 1% of them will ever be granted. The federal government, i.e. the President of the United States of America, should go ahead and do that, thereby liberating people and giving them the opportunity to get, get their lives back. But I want to talk to you about what some of the American people have to say. 68% of Americans support making cannabis use legal. Just across the board, recreational, puff puff pass, have a gummy every now and then. How about a chocolate, a chocolate bar? Yeah, edibles, that's it. And around 90% support allowing medical marijuana. So obviously for sensibilities, when people know that someone may be using a little cannabis, a little ganja to alleviate pain, we're with it, right? 90%. And then some are a little skittish about recreational use, so the number goes to 68%. But what is the moral of the story? Is that the overwhelming majority of the American people believe that marijuana, cannabis, Mary Jane, ganja, the puff puff pass should be legal one way or another. It is criminal, and I use that word deliberately, that anybody would be in prison for the use of cannabis or trafficking in cannabis, and especially for a life sentence, absolutely makes no sense. And this man, Cecil, Mr. Craig, Craig Cecil, actually got his sentence commuted by, wait for it, President Donald J. Trump. Can you believe it? I was released uh, from prison on January 20th, 2021. 
President Trump's last half day in office. And it was to the last minute. I mean, Craig had already gone to bed. He didn't think it was going to happen. At five minutes after midnight, I talked on the phone with Ivanka Trump, and she told me that her father had commuted my sentence to time served. Now, my grandmother used to say even a broke clock is right twice a day. And I must admit, Ms. Trump got that one right. We need to go beyond treating both the use of and the sale of cannabis as if it is the worst thing in the world that can be happening. It is not. We need to take it off of Schedule 1, decriminalize it, and make it legal all across the United States of America. And guess what? Use those tax dollars to do a whole lot of good in the world. You have states like Colorado who have done that. And that money that comes in that they use for public good, we could do that all over the United States of America because the government is very good at taxing stuff. We need to tax this stuff and use it for education and to give people relief. So come on, federal government, get with the program. Let's decriminalize marijuana.